Viewers, you're watching the explosive exclusive with me and Navika Kumar. And let me at the very outset tell you that over the next three, four hours, we are going to be breaking yet another explosive aspect of this entire story. Yesterday, we told you that at eight o'clock, we would uh, break something that would alter the narrative once again. We are telling you that at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, we're going to bring you uh, details which will once again change the course of the narrative. And we seldom fail to deliver viewers, as you know. Now, through the day today, Times Now has been able to access, again exclusively, the call records of Riya Chakravarti. And we've looked, uh, Navika, very closely through these call records. And uh, one of the aspects of these call reports, uh, apart from, of course, the number of conversations she's had with those who are being today questioned by the Enforcement Directorate, is a conversation or a series of them with uh, the DCP of Bandra, Abhishek Trimukhe. This is uh, very, very astonishing. You know, it, it, seems like, it seems like a plot because Mr. Dahia, the predecessor of Mr. Trimukhe, was given the complaints and he says, I, don't ask me now, uh, ask my successor. And the successor is a man who is in touch with Riya Chakrabarti on the phone, not once, not twice, but at least four times and a message exchange with Riya Chakrabarti. Two calls, one incoming, one outgoing between Riya Chakrabarti and, uh, inspect, uh, and DCP Trimukhe and in July again. Two calls, one incoming, one outgoing, and the exchange of an SMS. Now, if the same police station and the DCP of that police station who had earlier in February received the calls, the complaints of the family members of a fellow IPS officer from Haryana police and did not act on it, even though they were, they were informing about the risk to the life of Sushant Singh Rajput, uh, a well-known uh, uh, film uh, film world star uh, living in that area they didn't move an inch they but an inch. they were in touch with Riya Chakrabarti soon after the death of Sushant Singh Rajput and there is a violation here at least uh, as far as norms are concerned it's only the IO if at all that needs to be in touch with uh, a prime suspect you know we have seen in the past Navika in a very high profile case a murder case uh, where a husband and wife were put behind bars, a senior police official uh, interfering in that case was pulled up and uh, also reportedly transferred. Uh, because apart from the IO, uh, no one is supposed to be looking at uh, conversing or seeking information from the prime suspects. This is a violation of the norms. Absolutely. And, and that is why questions are now arising on whether whether there was any deliberate move by the DCP's office in Bandra East yeah. to deliberately step aside from the warning signals that were given uh, in regard to the safety of uh, Sushant Singh Rajput versus these calls that were being made to Riya Chakrabarti, who in the family's complaint was somebody who was under the spotlight of suspicion as per them. And Riya Chakrabarti was actually only a live-in partner. Yes. The, the next of kin, the legal family, happened to be the family that was warning against Riya Chakrabarti. So what was the police doing? Being in touch with Riya Chakrabarti, but not giving absolutely any importance to the complaints of the family. That's the big question. And that is the real story that begins. Now look at the number of coincidences, uh, Rahul. First, WhatsApp uh, details uh, and, the, and the complaint details that were exposed on Times Now. Now, we've also got the diary of Sushant Singh Rajput with the pages torn off and missing. We've also exposed Siddharth Pithani, the man who discovered the body of Sushant Singh Rajput, who went and left the key maker outside before he opened the door. Makes you ask the question, did he know what he was going to find inside? That's why he didn't want anybody else to see. Was he an accomplice or not? He is the crucial witness in all of this. And his calls, 
his exchanges with Rhea Chakrabarti. Now, they all come around at a time when Rhea Chakrabarti is being questioned by the Enforcement Directorate about the two high-value purchases that she's done when her income tax returns only show 14 lakh rupees in the previous year. How is she managing to buy such expensive properties, properties. when her incomes do not stand scrutiny to that kind of purchasing power? Many questions that the Mumbai police has neither looked at nor spoken about on top of it, the entire circus around the Bihar police and the senior IPS officer and quarantining him gives away the intent, in fact, the malified intent of the Mumbai police. Now, let's have a look at these uh, call data records, viewers. Let's bring them up. Uh, I think we can go to our uh, newsroom uh, where we have uh, Vivek Narayan and others who are standing by, but let's at least uh, bring them up uh, on the screen. There you can see, uh, that's the confirmation, Navika. Uh, Ria DCP's phone calls, outgoing calls, two in uh, SMS exchange, one, there's the name, Abhishek Trimukhe. If you can just uh, have a look at that screen, Navika, and you can that's see. That's right. In yeah. fact, on June 20th, uh, 2020, this is six days after Sushant Singh Rajput's so-called suicide declared by the Mumbai police, the Bandra DCP messages Ria. 20th of June, six days after Sushant Singh Rajput's death, when Rhea had not even appeared for the funeral of Sushant Singh Rajput, a man she said she was in love with and living with. Then, June 21st, 2020, Rhea calls Bandra DCP and this call lasts about 28 seconds. The very next day, June 22nd, 2020, Bandra DCP again calls Rhea at 10.30 a.m. And then, these phone lines fall silent for a while. Then 1st of July, Bandra DCP, Ria exchanged a 66 second call. Also, July 18th, the Bandra DCP, Ria exchanged again another 61 second call. Were these messages being given on something she needed to be aware of or she was informing the Mumbai police that she was being asked some questions or some sort of information that was coming in? Well. These are important questions and these questions may hold the key to this entire mystery of Sushant Singh Rajput's mystery death. Now, from what we are being told uh, by highly placed sources uh, uh, in uh, the uh, Mumbai police, uh, this is also uh, an anomaly, viewers. Uh, it is usually the I.O. and I think uh, Vivek Narayan is with us. Uh, Vivek Narayan, it's uh, usually as we were talking also a little while back when we received the information, it was uh, obviously startling to all of us and then a precedent was also cited. Exactly. We're not going to take any names for now. But I think everyone knows which case I'm referring to when I was talking to uh, Navika. But the fact is, I.O.s need to be in contact, if at all, with prime suspects not individuals who are heading divisions, ranges, etc. This in itself is a violation of the norms. But just talk us through some of these uh, call data records and what they are telling us today. Well, if and if a very senior official is in touch with one of the person of interest, I won't say she's a suspect at this point, a person of interest, it should have been recorded. There should have been witnesses. It should have been a proper record made of it. None of it is uh, available. There was no conversation, no talk till date that uh, high-level official of uh, the Mumbai police is in touch with Ria. Well, that was still, we came out with this document. And what does this document show you? It shows you that Abhishek Trimukhe, the DCP of Zone 9, was in touch with Ria. This is uh, Ria's CDR, which clearly mentions uh, uh, Abhishek Trimukhe's number. And there were two tel incoming calls. There were two outgoing calls, one SMS, uh, totaling five conversations between them both in text and in voice. Well, this is not to include WhatsApp chats uh, or messaging uh, interaction they might have had because of late that seems to be the norm. But even voice calls, uh, Rahul Navika, the fact that they were in touch with each other, the onus now on Mumbai police flat and fair to come out and tell what, what, what were they talking about, what was the gist of the conversation and why this conversation was initiated. Absolutely, Viveka. Uh, uh, you know, this is not the only aspect of the CDR, but we'll come to the second lot of what we need to tell you about the call data record of Ria. I want to go straight across to our reporters on the ground, uh, and I want to begin with you, Kajal. Kajal, this conversation with uh, Mr. Trimukhe, very, very unusual conversations. 
uh, many people are speculating as to what could have been going on. Uh, the fact of the matter is none of these were recorded uh, in any case log, uh, seem to be completely off the radar. Uh, can you put it in perspective and why hasn't the Mumbai police, Mr. Trimukhe or anyone else come out and issued a statement till now? Kajal, can you hear me at all? Was the question for me? Yes, it is for you. Yes, yes, I could hear you, sir. I didn't. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, uh, uh, sir. Uh, uh, so, so far, what we have heard is that uh, the uh, DCP has. Uh, 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 the last time I contacted him, he said that he was in a court case, and he also, uh, the the Mumbai police also came up with a list of dates. Uh, when uh, the DCP is expected to have contacted uh, uh, Ria. According to the Mumbai police version, it is the fact that they contacted her for the summons uh, for uh, to the police station for the uh, uh, statement that was recorded twice. But of course, questions still will be raised as to why this was not being done by the IO himself and why the DCP himself was coordinating this. Uh, to that, um, uh, the response of the Mumbai police is that it, is a it was a high-profile case and which is why the DCP was also uh, taking interest in this particular case and that is why the DCP was uh, contacting persons of interest. In this case, for the Mumbai police, as uh, uh, Vivek uh, rightly pointed out, uh, Ria was only a person of interest and they hadn't, even until the time that the Bihar police came, they hadn't really considered her as an accused. Uh, so yes, that's why the questions. Kajal, do, uh, has, the Mumbai, persist, has the uh, Mumbai police what? suddenly discovered that this is a high-profile case? Uh, because uh, in February, Siddhant Mishra, uh, let me get you in. In February, when the family of Sushant Singh Rajput was sending WhatsApps and complaints, not once, not twice, but several times, at that time, nobody reacted. Nobody reacted. Mr. Dahia, the DCP of uh, Bandra East then, did not react and wanted a written complaint on a piece of paper and and besides that he was not going to take any uh, you know action on on the fears of the family of the risk to sushant singh rajput's life but now in june and july suddenly the case becomes uh, very high profile high profile because of ria or high profile because of sushant singh rajput Well, uh, absolutely right, Navakaji. There was a there was a lapse on the part of uh, uh, of uh, Mr. Dahiya not to share uh, the chats, not to come out in public and tell about it that he was aware about it. First thing is that he did not take action then in the month of February. Then he did not even share it with the team who is investigating. He did not even share it with the top uh, brass of Mumbai police. Now what we have accessed is the CDR Navikaji, where which clearly establishes that how Mr. Trimukhe was in uh, was in touch with Ria. There were several calls. There were I think four call exchanges at the same time one text message. Now the fact remains that as per the procedure, this is IO's duty to issue some months to speak to the witnesses but yes in this particular case from a very beginning Mr. Trimukhe was involved he was taking interest and he himself accepted the fact that not just Ria he was in touch with several other witnesses as well not just that Navikaji uh, he told uh, he told uh, some of the people that he was uh, uh, he uh, after the statement of Ria he called Ria and her father to his office to understand the case to understand the dispute between Sushant and Ria and that was the reason that the calls were exchange and he also asked Ria that if she can share some more details of the case then she is free to do that then uh, as far as the text message is confirmed the clarification that's, that's came so on much that. that's so much concern that the DCP has uh, about uh, Ria Chakravarti but Priyank Tripathi let me ask you as somebody who's followed uh, crime stories uh, and and very very high profile ones at that Priyank I want to ask you Sushant Singh Rajput by any stretch of the imagination was slightly bigger star than Riya Chakrabarti. Now, his risk to life was not news for the Mumbai police, for the DCP of Bandra East. But Riya's concerns and her relationships, you know, they were not getting into Siddharth Pitani who found the dead body. They did not go into bank accounts, any financial details. But th what they are looking at is relationship problems between. Uh, Ria and Sushant Singh Rajput. Were they looking for an alibi or were they investigating the case? <coughs> 
See, now it's quite, uh, quite clear that uh, the Mumbai police was ignoring the message which was sent by the family member, the real family members of Sushant Singh Rajput, uh, which was sent to them on a uh, you know, continuous basis. But they preferred to call uh, Riya Chakrabarti, even after the Bihar police had filed the FIR, uh, after uh, you know, considering the fact that she was a uh, you know, close friend or probably a girlfriend of Sushant Singh Rajput. So that uh, logic, uh, Mumbai police is certainly uh, at, will attempt to give and that we should be prepared of because uh, what they will come up and justify that uh, since uh, Riya was staying with Sushant we had to call her but she was nowhere in picture Navika she was neither there in the house nor uh, uh, Riya Chakrabarti was uh, there when uh, according to Mumbai Mo police story when uh, Sushant Singh Rajput was coming uh, in uh, uh, was Priyank just stay on with us big breaking news coming in updates coming in from uh, the ED questioning of uh, Riya Chakrabarti this is the first time that the ED is of course summoned her and in the morning uh, there was an attempt to dodge the ED summons. The ED didn't back down. Finally, Ria, along with her uh, brother, other family members are all now inside that ED office. I want to go straight across to Arunil. Arunil, we are being told that Ria Chakravarti is stonewalling the enforcement directorate, not really uh, answering specifically any of the questions. Well, Rahul, that is on the expected lines and that because of that only she didn't want to go to the ED office to be uh, to be asked the, uh, the tough questions. And since around f more than five hours now, Riya Chakravarti, Shruti Modi and her brother, uh, uh, Shomik, Mo uh, Shomik Chakravarti are being questioned at the ED office. And now we understand that uh, they are not responding, they are not cooperating uh, with the investigation. Basically, ITR records were asked from uh, Riya Chakravarti. She said that she will have to consult with her CA as well as her lawyer. The CA has also been summoned basically. So more information can be sought from the CA only. But the Riya Chakrabarti has been repeatedly mentioning her lawyer saying that she will have to get information from uh, by cons after consultation with her lawyer as well. And in the morning only, the, the council team of Riya Chakrabarti had mentioned about it that uh, they will not be going, uh, they wouldn't want to go to the ED because the, the, uh, the hearing in the Supreme Court is already ongoing and, de and depending upon the verdict in the, on the, in the Supreme Court, they will prefer to go to the Enforcement Directorate. Earlier itself, they had dodged one uh, summons from the Enforcement Directorate citing rains in the city of Mumbai. Today, they had no chance, no option but to go to the ED office and now we understand that they are not really cooperating with the Enforcement Directorate. Now, you know, the other part to this entire story is the, uh, of course, the stonewalling, the questioning is going on. It's been going on now for about seven, eight hours. But And, you know, it's been, you know, Rahul, yeah. it's been in the public domain that the ED is looking at the two high value properties and her income tax uh, details because it's been it's been broken here on times now. Yeah. Uh, in fact, two days ago. Uh, and Rhea Chakravarti comes uh, for this uh, questioning with without being armed with these kind of documents she says the ITR you know is there a predetermined got... way that they want to stonewall Stone. this by mm. time uh, reach the supreme court hearing and then wait for uh, possibly the supreme court saying that okay cbi's juridic uh, jurisdiction is not there and then it's back to the pavilion with the mumbai police which in any case is cooperating more with the accused than with anybody else so well, at least on the face of on it, the yes, face of it that's what right. it looks like i i want to bring in vivek once again because uh, the cdr records don't only show that she was conversing with the uh, dcp of bandra uh, she's been talking at length with some of her relatives and other key accused. Just take us through those details also, Vivek. Very, very interesting insights yes. coming through this CDR. Well, this one, what I have with me is the bank statement of Shavik. Remember, Shavik Riyadh's brother was also a partner uh, of uh, uh, Sushant at one point. The kind of relationship they had and uh, the money transfer that we had will have to be looked in detail by a forensic uh, analyst. Right now, what I can show you is something of interest. On and off, there are multiple payments made to Shavik by Sushant. One such payment is this one, 40,000 rupees being made. This is Shavik's bank statement and this is from Sushant's Kotak Mahindra branch. And this one, Kotak Mahindra branch, Sushant. And it was sent on 10 6 2019. Now, this is the kind of payments which have been reported. These are not huge amounts, mind you. 
These are not huge amounts by any stretch of imagination, Rahul Navika, but these always prove that uh, there was a link, there was an active transaction between the duo. Till what extent, what was shown is a more which is not there in these statements. These are the things that uh, individuals at Enforcement Directorate, specialists in uh, cyber forensics will have to look at and dig out. Well, it's important, it's important yes. to see that earlier, 33,000, uh, Let's just know. pull out those, uh, <coughs> uh, those records of those uh, cash transactions and put them there, please, on screen. Yes. When we, when we first uh, dug out uh, the uh, financial details of the company's RIA, her brother Shovik and uh, Sushant Singh Rajput had set up, uh, there was very clearly a mention that 33,000 rupees were paid by Ria, 33,000 by her brother and 33,000 by uh, Sushant Singh Rajput. Now, if Sushant Singh Rajput is putting that money into Shovik's account, then it clearly means that the 33,000 that came in from Shovik's account uh, for the setting up of the company was also financed by Sushant Singh Rajput. Now, what was Sushant Singh Rajput actively doing this? Was somebody transferring the money while uh, saying that Sushant Singh Rajput is on medicines? Uh, was this was this an active transaction? Because I also know well, this that is there exclusive. Was... This is exclusive, and let's put the watermark on it. It's exclusive. This is very big. This is very very big. Let's put the watermark on it, Nizam Bhai. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Yes. Yes, Navika. And and it clearly shows that money transactions were being. Uh, uh, rooted, rooted through Sushant Singh Rajput's account into Shovik as well as uh, perhaps uh, Rhea Chakraborty's uh, own uh, uh, accounts and uh, clearly the angle of financial draining by Rhea Chakravarti that has been made by the family not just now in the FIR but earlier in February seems to be, seems to be true though for the moment, 40,000 rupees. Me, Navika, that uh, when these facts are being confronted uh, to her today by the enforcement directorate, she's finding it hard to explain? Well, well, clearly, well, clearly, the fact is that she doesn't have too much to corroborate. And uh, at the moment, stonewalling and buying time seems to be uh, the operation. Now, uh, whether that's the advice she's been given by her legal team, whether... Uh, uh, you know, it is uh, Rhea Chakrabarti who herself uh, is talking about this. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, Rhea Chakrabarti in touch with the, uh, the DCP of Bandra and now these transactions into Shovik, uh, her brother's account with uh, Sushant Singh Rajput. Were these transactions being done with the knowledge of Sushant Singh Rajput? Were they happening without his knowledge? Was it only limited to this 40,000 and 10,000 rupees that we can see at the moment? Well, or was I can there see, more money? I can see on that uh, particular um, uh, you know, transaction list, uh, Navika, shopping, evidence of shopping even by Ria, because there are some uh, uh, obvious uh, uh, purchases for women that have been made, and you can, you can see them very, very clearly. Uh, some going into 30,000 rupees, etc. So, uh, and obviously, look at the date. Look yeah. at the date. Date yeah. of transfer is 10th of June 2019. So, just four days before. No, that's 2019, not oh, 2020. 2019. Yes. Yeah. Then uh, there is uh, Sushant's account credited to sh uh, this uh, again October 5th. Uh, you know, if it matches uh, with the dates of setting up of the companies, because I do remember that one of the companies was set up in 2019. Uh, somewhere around October, September, October, and one company in January. Right. So money going into the account of Shovik in June and in October of 2019. These are two transactions that we have found out so far. Uh, were there other transactions? We'll have to get a whole lot of more information uh, from the banks uh, uh, that Sushant Singh Rajput had. But there's a very, very important information that I want to break. Sushant Singh Rajput also did try to put to put his bank account, this Kotak Mahindra bank, he wanted to close this account and open another one. Oh. Was, this is something that the family has told the Bihar police. And Big this, news, viewers. This can, be, this can be broken on the channel that Sushant Singh Rajput, even before 13th of June, had tried to close his account in Kotak Mahindra bank earlier this year. And following that, Two days or three days later, that request to the bank was cancelled. Now, 
We know his emails have been tampered. We also know Samuel uh, Miranda was somebody who used to handle his emails. Were these uh, uh, decisions of Sushant Singh Rajput to close his account then uh, reverted back by uh, Samuel Miranda? What was his uh, role? Because he's somebody who's been questioned by the Enforcement Directorate and the Enforcement Directorate sources have told us that he had a crucial role in, in these electronic decisions that were being taken and mails and uh, emails that were going out of Sushant Singh Rajput's account. Also, we also know that Sushant Singh Rajput's credit card had many add-ons. In fact, Rhea Chakrabarti's own family possibly had four add-on cards. Four add-on cards. So, so we need to break this uh, news on the channel and we need to tell our viewers that even before June, Sushant Singh Rajput tried to close his account. A statement that was uh, once again reversed after three or four days. But Sushant Singh Rajput had made a move, requested his bank to close his account. Okay, that's big news. Uh, I just hope that uh, we are going to see it on air very, very quickly. Uh, Nizam Bhai, if you could just convey that. This is a news breaking by Navika Kumar right now on the channel, which we need to flash very, very quickly. Now, now what are we seeing here, viewers? We are seeing for the first time bank transactions of uh, Shovik Chakravarti, Riya's uh, uh, brother. And I want to bring in uh, Vivek. Vivek, uh, you were talking about these transactions. Just uh, put this into larger perspective. Now, let me tell you, it shows a pattern. And what does the pattern show? That this is Shovik's account. And look at the people who are putting in money into this account. Uh, uh, though it's not right behind me, but this is what the call date, uh, this is what the bank statement essentially says. On 10 6 2019, 40,000, 50,000, 35,000 on December. These are all monies which Rhea is putting into her brother's account. No problems with that. Then you have four uh, incoming, four times. Uh, Sushant Singh Rajput is putting some money into Riyadh's brother's account. Why is he doing it? Then you have uh, Buddha Pitani or Siddharth Pitani putting in money into again. Small amounts 3,000, 6,500, 1,560. Why is Buddha Pitani having an interaction, even if it is limited? on to Shovik's account. These are all questions which will be put to Buddha Pitani by the Enforcement Directorate. Mind you, behind these small sums, it just shows you that there is a financial link between these two. Till now, Pitani has been uh, disagreeing with us. When Navika put it specifically to him, were you handling funds? He said no. But it just proves that there was a handling of funds by these people. They were talking to each other and there was uh, more than what meets the eye. If you can go to the next point, uh, Rahul, on the call data recorder, uh, CDR details that we have, uh, uh, the call and the other details that we have, uh, can I just show you with uh, what it also is? Another angle, if you're ready with it, I can show you that also. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, this is the call uh, record of uh, Rhea Chakrabarti. What is wrong with this one? There are multiple calls to multiple people, especially psychiatrists. Why was she in touch with Kursi Ch Chavra, one of the top uh, uh, psychiatrists? There were total of 16 exchanges between Riya Chakravarti and Kursi Chavra. Five uh, incoming calls, 10 outgoing calls and one SMS. So now, Riya Chakravarti not only speaking to Mahesh but Navika, but also monopolizing all the conversations with the doctors attending to... Sushant Singh Rajput. Absolutely. Calling so many psychiatrists, uh, speaking 16 times to Mahesh Bhatt, uh, speaking to the DCP Bandra, all raising questions, uh, questions that so far uh, the Mumbai police hasn't uh, shed any light on. And of course, Rhea Chakrabarti hasn't spoken about. I just want to ask you, about. in what capacity was Rhea Chakrabarti talking to these doctors? She is not a blood relation. And what about client uh, doctor... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, non-disclosure packs, etc. I mean, how did she manage to speak uh, supposedly on the condition of uh, Sushant Singh Rajput with his doctors? Well, the simple fact is, and this is what the family has been talking about, that anybody who picks up a medical prescription of somebody they say ha is having mental problems and wants to uh, you know, beyond the family have possession of that, 
is somebody who has a smoking gun and, and somebody who can blackmail. And was Ria? We don't know, but that's a theory and a theory that should be investigated that while Ria had access to these medical prescriptions and his medical condition, was she using it to, to actually blackmail Sushant Singh Rajput? Was it why, what was causing the anxiety that he had? Because everybody knows with mental illnesses in public domain, professional setbacks are the norm in this country as anywhere else. Absolutely. I think this is a very, very important aspect that we begin to focus on viewers. We were told yesterday, uh, or at least till yesterday, that Sushant Singh Rajput was not in control. Uh, he had cut himself off. Uh, he had become a, a person who was uh, being treated uh, at arm's length by Bollywood directors. But that, that entire narrative crumbled yesterday because just a few hours before his uh, demise, under very suspicious circumstances, let me add now, uh, he was speaking to top directors and producers. He was uh, very much uh, negotiating on films and uh, there were offers being made not just by one or two but a whole slew of directors so he was in demand and now we see how Riya Chakravarti was actually uh, holding conference calls with his doctors now what was her interest because the family says that she was convinced or she was trying to convince Sushant Singh Rajput that he had trouble and that he needed to seek help and I find it very very strange that the doctors were saying uh, were having these conversations with Ria and not asking what her locus standi was. Let's go straight across because we tried to speak with Ria Chakravarti today. A little while back, we, we in fact uh, put a mic to her. She was very evasive, but this was a dramatic sequence that Vajula captured uh, on his camera as he got very close to Ria Chakravarti today. Let's play it out. What do you have to say about the allegations that have been leveled against you, Ria? There are a lot of allegations against you, Ria. The father has said that you were involved. What do you have to say about the allegations that have been leveled against you, Ria? There are a lot of allegations against you, Ria. The father has said that you were involved. Now those visuals, let's put those visuals back on our very, very instructive viewers because she's going in with her brother. That's what uh, who he is. Uh, and uh, as she walks past, uh, Vaji puts the question, what do you think? How do you respond to the allegations that are being made uh, against you, Ria Chakravarti? And she turns around and she looks straight back at Vaji and Times Now's cameras. She doesn't offer an explanation. Shovik is also turning around. Uh, craning his neck, uh, looking back over his shoulder, sideways at uh, Vaji. Both have heard the questions very clearly, but she chooses not to answer. Of course, that's a prerogative. Vajula is there with us. Uh, Vaji, describe the body language. Both are looking straight back at you. They've heard your question. This is uh, a great uh, bit of uh, legwork by you. Uh, what are you sensing was uh, her state of mind? and a disposition. Well, they clearly came with the mindset that they will not talk to the media, they will not entertain us, they will not speak to us at all. Uh, as you all, as you saw the visuals, we we questioned him. We went inside the ED office questioning her till the staircase, and she did, did not answer any of our questions. We posted straight questions. What do you have to say for the allegations leveled by the father of Sushant Singh? These were the only question that we asked her, and that's the only question that the entire nation is asking against her because that's the allegation of the father that has been leveled against her. After that, we questioned Shovik Chakravarti, who also was allowed by the ED to go back to his house and get the documents which we didn't see in our hand when he returned. We posted the question when he was leaving. We posted a question when he came back. But they had this in their mind that they will not speak to the media. I think that was something that was told to them by the council. And as we know, earlier in the morning also the council had given us details saying that they will not come and then they suddenly landed. So these are some way or the other tactics in which they want to stay away from the media glare because uh, uh, they clearly know that they are at the back foot because of the investigation and the chronology of the investigation that has been going on from the side of Mumbai police and from the side of Bihar police and how the investigation from nepotism to groupism to now murder and suicide is coming out and this is something that they are scared of and it's seen in their body language when they do not answer the questions that have been posed to them directly, Rahul.
Baji, a brilliant job there asking those questions uh, to Riya Chakrabarti, but clearly she's neither giving answers to the media nor giving them uh, to the enforcement directorate. We are awaiting uh, for the questioning uh, to be over before we get an update from the ED on, on whether she's been cooperating uh, in the questioning. But let me get in our guest this uh, evening, Suresh Nakwa, spokesperson of the BJP in Maharashtra, Rajiv Ranjan uh, from the JDU, Swapnil Kothari, senior lawyer, G. Radhakrishnan, state president, uh, Tamil Nadu, Shiv Sena, uh, Aniket Nigam, advocate, and Sundar Balakrishnan, political analyst. Suresh Nakwa, to you first. The fact of the matter is, that there seems to be a bigger cover-up in this entire investigation by the Mumbai police than we had ever imagined. Of course, it's public knowledge the way the IPS officer from Bihar had been stamped and had been put under home quarantine. The Mumbai police did not want him to investigate. The entire police team was not allowed to come out of where uh, they were put up. Uh, but now what comes out is that the DCP of Bandra, Mr. Trimukhe, was in touch with Rhea after the death of Sushant Singh Rajput when the same office of the DCP was reluctant to even find out about Sushant Singh Rajput's welfare when the family complained to them. Now, doesn't this seem like a complete dereliction of duty by the Mumbai police? Suresh Nakhwa? Okay, I think yeah, his audio is down. His audio is down. We're going to try. Suresh ji, uh, your audio, I think, is on mute. Uh, you need to just quickly check it. This is the second time it's happening. Let me, uh, Navika, let me quickly update you. News coming in. ED is questioning. Uh, we are being told Riya, Shovik, and Shruti Gandhi Shruti, individually. Shruti Modi. Shruti Modi, rather. Individually in separate rooms. Uh, the ED may call uh, Riya. We are being told for a second round of questioning in the next year. What do you make of this uh, decision to question them independently? And who's really Shruti Modi in the scheme of things. Shruti Modi was uh, the secretary. According to the family, all of these people had connived. Now, we don't know. This is uh, possibly an angle that needs to be investigated. But Shruti Modi, Samuel Miranda and Siddharth Pitani had all uh, virtually combined their forces along with Shovik and Riya Chakrabarti and uh, were going out of their way to somehow make Sushant Singh Rajput believe that he was not in control of his faculties, he had mental problems, he was bipolar, all of these uh, things being stated by them, which is why we see also phone calls with several psychiatrists and counsellors uh, that Rhea Chakrabarti uh, is uh, in touch with. Uh, the fact would be to actually take each individual story or deposition and then confront each other with them. Okay. And if that has to happen, Rahul, my sense is that if this confrontation and then, uh, uh, you know, confronting both these uh, together will have to be done, then it will have to be done without allowing them to go out. Only then the confrontation can be done between the stories to match the stories of Riya Chakrabarti, Shovik and Shruti uh, Modi. Will that confrontation happen today? Will it happen later? We don't know. But their depositions and whether there are inconsistencies, uh, inconsistencies between these uh, various well, depositions. Well, let me tell you, Navika, you know, the, the unfortunate conclusion of all the exclusive angles we've broken here on this particular show is that uh, the Mumbai police has a lot to answer and is it part of a cover-up? That's the fundamental bottom line question and I want to go straight across to Rajiv Ranjan, spokesperson of the JDU. Uh, Ranjan ji, bataya ja raha hai ki Riya Chakravarti aur Bandra ke DCP ke beech mein aur hamare paas wo CDR ke records bhi hai uh, kai baat cheete hui thi इस पे आपका क्या कहना है देखिए सबसे पहले तो टाइम्स शाओ को मैं धन्यवाद दूंगा जिस तरह से आपने इस पूरे प्रकरण पर मेहनत की है वो काबिल तारीफ है और जो त्रिभुखे और रिया चक्रवर्ती के बाद के बीच जो दो मौके पर बातचीत हुई उसके सीडीआर को आपने सामने लाया और ये एक बड़ा लीड हो सकता है इस पूरे मामले को बेनकाब करने में दूसरी तरफ जो ईडी की कार्रवाई है और सीबीआई ने जिन लोगों के खिलाफ एफआईआर किया है वो नाम अगर आप देखें तो ईडी जिन लोगों को इंटेरोगेट कर रहा है उसमें वो दो नाम आज भी शामिल हैं। तो जो ट्रांजैक्शंस हैं उनको लेकर के उनके 
फादर ने भी कुछ अपीहेंसन जाहिर किए पटना में एफ हुआ और इसीलिए मुझे लगता है इस पूरे मामले को सीबीआई एक लॉजिकल कंक्लूजन पर पहुंचाएगी और वही जस्टिस होगा इसे कि अगर अब तक मुंबई पुलिस को किसी फिनेंशियल ट्रांजैक्शन में कोई गड़बड़ी नजर नहीं आई थी अगर उन्हें पूरे मामले में रिया चक्रवर्ती के इन्वॉल्वमेंट को लेकर के कोई डाउट नहीं था डीसीपी उनके उनके फादर से नहीं बात कर सकते थे लेकिन रिया चक्रवर्ती जो फ्यूनरल पर नहीं जाने के लिए तैयार थी उनके साथ बातचीत कर रहे थे तो मुझे लगता है ये पूरे मामले में एक तरफ ये पॉलिटिकल पैट्रोनेस भी है और मुंबई पुलिस की साख पर ये सवाल खड़े हुए हैं लेकिन बालाकृष्णन एक्सट्रीम मिस्टर बालाकृष्णन पॉलिटिकल पैट्रोन इज चार्ज वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन राहुल राहुल लेटमी टेल यू नो डोंट टेल मी आंसर द क्वेश्चन सर Answer the question. I will answer. I will answer. Yeah, answer, yeah, answer, answer the question. Allow me to answer. I will Please answer. go ahead. See, I tell you, if you talk of political pattern, I want to ask some simple question. If you are saying that you know somewhere police is being pressurized, on what grounds? On is what grounds? You still involved? don't understand the grounds, sir. In February, the family says there is risk to the life of uh, Sushant Singh Rajput. The police doesn't even make a phone call. Forget going and visiting and trying to find out from Sushant Singh Rajput. But after his death, they have time to speak to Riya Chakraborty. Riya Chakraborty, who was who was in the circle of suspicion of the family. And you are saying you don't understand on what grounds, sir? The CCTV footage, the torn pages from the diary, the the complaint. Of the family, the financial transactions. Sundar Balakrishnan, you want me to go on? You want me to go on on what the Mumbai police has to answer for? This is not the what. This is your DJP. They have written complaint. अरे रिटर्न कंप्लेंट सी रिया चक्रवर्ती ने दिया था जो उसको फोन कर रहे थे सुरेश नकुआ. Sundar Balakrishnan wants to say because there was no written complaint. The high-profile presence of Sushant Singh Rajput or the danger to his life was not a matter of any worry for the Mumbai police. Police can, when police can issue a summons one sixty CRPC on your WhatsApp, so why can't they accept a complaint on the written complaint? Sir, other is no, no, they don't accept it to police on mobile. They are not doing anything. They are not doing anything. Now, when the investigating officer. Is in conversation with Riya, probably updating her with the latest status. But what the situation? Please cut to the chase. Sir, Balakrishnan, your audio is really bad. We'll just correct that yeah. audio. Swapnil Kothari. Let me just Kothari. bring in Swapnil. Yes, Swapnil Kothari, Mr. Kothari. Good evening. A very simple I question. You know, there on the face of it, uh, we are being told that a big norm has been uh, broken, and the norm is that uh, senior police officers in charge of a range or a district do not. Get into making calls, responding to calls with uh, individuals who might be persons of interest or suspects. Call them what you want. It's the I.O. And we have seen in the past a case in which uh, action was taken against a very, very senior police officer of the Mumbai Police for unduly interfering in a murder case which involved a very high-profile couple. Do you find this anomalous? Ah. Uh It's not anomalous. It is entirely illegal. It is illicit. And first illegal, of all, congratulations illicit. to Rahul. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Rahul and uh, you, Navika, and the entire Times Now team for unearthing this uh, thing. It's shocking to me. And you know, at times I feel that uh, I'm not in the hands of uh, I'm not safe in the hands of the Mumbai police because if they are derelict in their duty, I think they need to resuscitate their reputation for being one of the best forces in the world. Uh, this is gross. This is gross dereliction, in my opinion. This needs to be, uh, uh, you know, checked into. This needs to be investigated. But I think first we need to investigate into whether Ria is going to be arrested or not. And I hope she does get arrested. And Navika is a very, very important and a crucial point. That first of all, you're going to put all these three guys in separate rooms and then you know bring these three together. And you know, I hope they don't get a chance to go back home and then they decide. But Navika, uh, you know, playing the devil's advocate, I'll tell you something. These three guys would have already decided that if they are put together, what they're going to say, or if they're, uh, you know, apart from each other, the what they're going to say. So. You know, it's going to be a little uh, difficult for the ED to really trap them that okay. easily because these people seem to be very seasoned uh, uh, offenders. Mr. I guess, Swapnil Kanthari, Mr. Swapnil Kanthari, I, I share I share the same fear with you. But as they often say, uh, the lies have many versions, and sometimes these versions between three people do not match, and that's when the giveaway happens. But the truth only has one version. So. 
we're hoping that quintessentially when when people make mistakes is when they are talking about the lies and and if that is if that is the suspicion and the hope that we have then aniket nigam i want to ask you i want to ask you dereliction of duty is to put the mumbai police's acts of omissions uh, very very gently or would you say that the mumbai police has any defense in this matter navika let me first clear the air about what is being said about mukhe i know that man is a sincere and honest ip now from what i have been reading in newspapers and seeing in television channels he was one of the senior officers who is monitoring the investigation of this case now it's not unusual for a senior officer to phone call somebody who is involved in the case in the sense his role the role of that person may be investigated from view point of the inquiry that was being conducted under section 174 let's not forget the fact that riha chakravarti when the phone calls were made was not made or arranged as an accused it was an enquiry under section 174 the patna fir had not come into picture by then it came subsequently number 1 number 2 is it so that mr abhishek trimuke had only called riya chakravarti and he had not called anybody else who is involved in this case you are, you are trying to show cdr selectively wherein you are trying to suggest that only riha chakravarti was being contacted nobody else was being contacted i don't think that's the truth i believe <laughs> an honest officer will not no, only call the cdr but honest officer will also call other persons who are involved in the case and you should check the cdr whether he is whether he is actually called other persons or not number 3 now we do not know what is the content of the telephone calls but i'll also tell you because for more than a decade i have been representing lot of people across the state of maharashtra and i have seen that police officers do make phone calls for the purpose of summoning witnesses or for the purpose of recording the statement or for the uh, mr mr nikam look i i understand you know you have great experience but in this particular case there's never been really much reason to summon because the mumbai police have never considered these people exactly. uh, persons of interest and that's what swapnin kothari is saying there's an illegality yes mr kothari you want to you want to say something may i just comment yeah uh, aniket aniket i think you i think you made your point we've understood your point now let me counter that point i think raul you've raised a very very valid and a legitimate point if these people are not suspects that in the mumbai police is open and because they parked up the wrong tree calling all the bollywood biggies about nepotism and depression it's only when the channel started making a loud noise that the time then the mumbai police really had to decide that oh you know we've got to show some semblance of uh, uh, you know credibility in the sense that try to do make some uh, you know show of uh, some investigation here and there or you know uh, in quest in uh, inquiry to be begin with because the investigation word is only used post an fir and once the fir is not been even registered 52 long days and we not there is not a single even if uh, not a single fir and that's the reason why bihar police and sushant mr nigam would you like to then, respond yes 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 It, see, it is not as if that she was an accused, and it was something unusual for a senior officer to call an accused on the on phone. She was, she was. She was an accused, accused sir. If you go by was, what the family had been saying from <laughs> from February, and also on the day of Sushant Singh Rajput's death, where they gave a written complaint and a statement, she was thought to be a suspect. Why are we ignoring yes, these facts? Yes. Let me answer to that by saying this. One of your reporters, I had heard saying that Mr. Dhaya had not shared that WhatsApp message to the other officers. Sir, How do you know that, you sir? In no, fact, Mr. Dhaya told us that he escalated was, the matter up the chain. I don't know which was, and when you heard that. You know, there is. No, hang on one second, Mr. Mr. Nikam. Let me tell you, there is a lot of disinformation that is being spread by different divisions within the Mumbai Police. If you speak to one officer, he'll tell you something different. If you speak to another, that person will tell you something quite different to the first officer. And there is a deliberate misinformation campaign. In fact, let me tell you. that the mumbai police chief and the mumbai police department came out right after times now broke the story of the uh, sos that was sent by the family and said uh, we never got a complaint and this is before we broke that story we never got know, any complaints know, from the family now, listen to me sir let me just put this right since you brought it up yes. please allow me sir so they said bald face lie and i'm using this term deliberately why they said 
No complaint has ever been received by us. Now, you know that a complaint by electronic transmission, whether it is uh, email or it's WhatsApp, can easily be taken as a FIR or the basis of an FIR. Even then, sir, and we are talking about the 19th and 26th, 25th of February, nothing was done, nothing. And then we were told they never complained. They never complained till the 14th of June. So, you know, let's let's no, let's no, let's not no, give no, such no, a wide no, berth no, also no, to our to our you know no disrespect meant but the police uh, have not shown themselves in this particular matter to be above question and, and now people are beginning to ask you just heard uh, rajiv ranjan ji saying that dekhe isme collusion hai collusion okay well well viewers big news also coming in uh, dr subramanian swami and ishkaran bhandari promising disclosures at 8 pm tonight it's going to get really big. We have a sensational news story to break at 8 p.m. And now, Dr. Subramaniam Swami and Ishkaran Bhandari to post a picture on Twitter, Justice for SSR. Uh, they are saying that there's going to be something big coming out. Now, we don't know what it's going to be, viewers, but uh, let's wait for that. But we can certainly tell you that Times Now will be breaking a big story at 8 p.m. And in just about six minutes viewers a sting that will further push the mumbai police into a corner we coming right back stay with this rolling broadcast into prime time don't move a muscle